Today, I would like to share the Word of God with you under the subject, Ascending to Heaven While Walking with God. We all want to go back to the Kingdom of Heaven. Having no doubt, we all have that hope for Heaven, right? In order for us to be able to go to heaven, we ought to live a life of faith like that of Enoch, Noah, and Abraham, who walked with God, so that we can ascend to heaven. Today, through the history of the forefathers of faith, who ascended to heaven after walking with God on the earth, let us learn the wisdom to go to heaven. Let's take a look at Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5 verse 21. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. And after he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Here, it is written that Enoch walked with God. Verse 23, Altogether, Enoch lived 365 years. Enoch walked with God, then he was no more, because God took him away. Here, the important part is, he walked with God. There must be a reason God recorded the history of a man who walked with God and ascended to heaven in Genesis chapter 5. If you think about the words, walking with God, it literally means walking together with God. How can we understand this spiritually? When we are reminded of the history of Enoch, who walked with God and ascended to heaven, or the history of Abraham and Noah, who walked with God, we can define walking with God as following the example of God. We too, who are living in the last days, should walk with God in order to enter heaven. Then how can we do that? Let us gain wisdom from Jesus in John chapter 13. John chapter 13, verse 15. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus said, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. If we say we are walking with Jesus and walking with Christ An Sang Hong, who came with the new name of Jesus and Jerusalem Mother, we should follow their example in Zion. Only then can we say we are walking with God and enter the kingdom of heaven. The Bible teaches us that. Let's confirm this in Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14, verse 3. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been, what? Had been redeemed from the earth. These are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they kept themselves pure. They follow the Lamb wherever He goes. Here, Lamb refers to Jesus, right? The Bible says that we should follow Jesus wherever He goes. It means that we should follow every example that He showed us, right? Since we are following the example of Christ in every way, the Bible said, they follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They were purchased from among men and offered as first fruits to God and the Lamb. 
People who can follow God wherever He leads them. They are the ones who follow every example of Jesus. There are so many religions and churches that claim to believe in God. Among them, which religion or which church is walking with God? There are the ones who are following every example of God. Don't you think so? Such people are qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven. The Bible testifies that. Since the Bible tells us that these people are the ones who walk with God, today, let us examine ourselves to see whether or not we are walking with God through a few verses in the Bible. Let's see if we are walking with God or if we are walking with our own opinions or feelings. Let us examine ourselves through the Bible. What kind of example did Christ set for us so that we can follow it? Let us go to Luke chapter 4, verse 16, and find out if we are walking with God. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, what days does the Sabbath day fall on? In the modern weekly system, it is the seventh day, Saturday. On the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. Among many examples that Jesus showed us, in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, we can find the example of keeping the Sabbath day. Walking with God means following God's example. Jesus, who came to this earth 2,000 years ago, and the Christ, who came a second time in the age of the Holy Spirit, showed us an example of keeping the Sabbath day. Since Christ set an example of keeping the Sabbath day, on which day should we worship God, to walk with God? Shouldn't we worship on the Sabbath day? That is the faith of people who walk with God. Today, all churches say they are walking with God. However, if they do not follow God's example, God's truth, and God's path, they cannot say they are walking with God. Even with just the simple but important truth of the Sabbath day, we can distinguish between the church that is walking with God and the church that doesn't. If a church is following the examples that Jesus set for His people, it is certain that the church is walking with God. With this simple fact, we must find the church that keeps the Sabbath day. Those who walk with God can ascend to heaven. Walking with God is the mission of the church that God established. We can understand this through the teachings of the Bible. Then, the church that remembers the Sabbath day by keeping it holy is the church that walks with God.
There are many churches, like the sand by the sea, but among them, which church keeps the Sabbath? It is the Church of God. Although numerous people forsake the Sabbath and choose Sunday worship, we cannot forsake God. We must never forsake the examples and teachings that God set for us. We should walk with God. Even if the whole world forsakes God, we must walk with God until the end. Keeping in mind the fact that walking with God is following God's example. Let's go to Luke chapter 22, verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. This is the scene of Jesus keeping the Passover. Since Jesus set the example of keeping the Passover, what should people who walk with God do? They too should follow Jesus' example. Why? Because Jesus said, I have set you an example that you should follow as I have done for you. I have shown you an example so that you may do the same. In actuality, Jesus didn't need to keep the Sabbath and the Passover, nor to be baptized to go to heaven. Don't you think so? But why did he do that? Baptism, too, is for sinners. Do you think Jesus has sin? He has no sin. Even though he came in the flesh, the Bible testifies that he has no sin. Then why was it that he was baptized and kept the Sabbath and the Passover? We should think about this carefully. He did all this saying, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. If we are walking with God, what should we do in our life of faith? We should follow the examples that God set for us. We should put them into practice. That's why in Luke chapter 22, verse 7, Jesus sent his most beloved disciples, Peter and John, to prepare the Passover. Then, we should find what kind of church keeps the Passover, which Jesus and the Apostles kept. Let's see how Jesus was concerned about the Passover. Verse 9, Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, the Passover has a date and time to be celebrated, right? Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I, do what? I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. The Passover is a regulation that contains a very important meaning in God's work of redemption. He said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you. Let's see in verse 17 what kind of promise he wanted to give us on the Passover. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper he took the cup, saying, This cup is... What? This is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. What kind of feast did God grant to all mankind? 
It is the Passover, and He set us an example of how to keep it. However, in the 4th century, in 325, the Passover, the truth of life, was abolished through the Council of Nicaea. Churches nowadays do not follow the teachings of Jesus, but accepted the teachings of the organization that abolished the Passover. Because of this, the church which follows God's example is small, and the number of churches which do not follow the example of Christ are many. This is prophesied in Matthew chapter 13. Everyone, you are familiar with weeds in the field, right? Even though people don't take care of weeds, they grow well. However, the wheat does require our efforts. We have to water it in season, fertilize it, and remove pests. Unless we do these things, the wheat cannot grow well. This is a law of nature. Weeds grow well, although we don't take care of them at all. Nowadays, weeds are prevalent on this earth. They cover the entire field, the world. However, at the end, during the harvest time, God will collect the weeds and bundle them together to be burned and gather the wheat to bring it into the heavenly barn. Didn't God say so? In these last days, even though all people forsake God's teachings and example, what should we do? We should follow the example as God showed us. Let's look at verse 20 again. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. God proclaimed the truth of the new covenant on the Passover. We are His church and His children, so we should follow His example as a matter of course. Nowadays, there are many churches, like the sand by the seashore. Among those many churches, which church keeps the Passover that Jesus eagerly desired to keep with His disciples? Which church follows the example of Christ in keeping the Passover? We should confirm this matter. What will happen to those who keep the Passover? They will ascend to heaven, like Enoch and Elijah, because they've all walked with God. Walking with God means to walk together. Walk together means following God's examples and putting them into practice. Now we found the Sabbath and the Passover as the examples we should follow. Let's find one more. Let's go to John, chapter 7, verse 2. But when the Jewish feast of… what? The Jewish feast of tabernacles was near. When we read verse 14, it is written that it was halfway through the feast. This shows that it was the middle of the Feast of Tabernacles. When we go to verse 37, on the last and greatest day of the feast, of the Feast of Tabernacles, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. Two thousand years ago, Jesus came to this earth and set an example of keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. There is the Sabbath day, the Passover, and the Feast of Tabernacles. There is one church that follows all these examples. What church is that? It is the Church of God. The church that we belong to is the church that Jesus Christ established. The church that God has restored in the age of the Holy Spirit. We are following all the teachings and examples of God. The Church of God will ascend to heaven like Enoch, who walked with God, 
The Church of God is the place where all people who will ascend to heaven gather. Jesus wanted his disciples to preach the gospel in Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. Let's go to Matthew chapter 28 and find out what kind of gospel he wanted us to preach. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The next part is important. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We should teach them and let them obey what Jesus commanded us. We should do that toward all nations. Whose will is it? It is God's will. It's because through this way, all people can receive salvation. However, when you look around the churches nowadays, how many of them keep what Jesus commanded them? If we consider the few things we study today, we can know which church is keeping and teaching what God commanded His people. We can now definitely distinguish it, can't we? The everlasting kingdom of heaven is drawing near, very near. Thinking of the kingdom of heaven, we should walk with God all the more, so that we will ascend to heaven like Enoch, receiving the testimony, You are the one who pleased God. In order for us to do so, we need to correctly understand what Jesus taught us, commanded us, and asked us to obey, so that we, all children of Zion, can walk with God every day. There are numerous churches around us, right? Let us think about what they are keeping among the things that Jesus commanded us to keep. Today, let us think about that matter in relation to the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is the truth that Jesus kept as an example. However, is there any church that keeps the Sabbath day? There is no church except the Church of God. Some say, how about the Seventh-day Adventist Church? However, that church does not keep the Sabbath correctly, as they worship from Friday. We cannot say they keep the Sabbath day. Also, on what day do most Christian churches worship God? They worship God on Sunday, which is not the Sabbath day either. Some churches keep Friday worship. Some churches keep Sunday worship. How about us? We worship God on the seventh day, following the teaching of God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. This is the way of the faith that follows the example of Jesus correctly. What about the Passover? Nowadays, you cannot find any church that keeps the Passover. In the last page of the Gospel, Jesus gave us His last request, go to all nations, and teach them so that they can obey what I have commanded you. When we do that, the whole world can receive salvation. However, all these teachings are being neglected. The Sabbath day, is it welcomed? No. The Passover, is it welcomed? No. What about the Feast of Tabernacles? It too is rejected. People are neglecting what belongs to God. That is why the Bible said that the way to go to heaven is the narrow path, isn't it? Many people go to the path that leads to destruction. However, 
only a few go to the gate that leads us to life, because the path is narrow. Among 7.7 billion people in this world, how many people are walking with God in their path of life? When we compare the number of the children of God who are walking with God to 7.7 billion people who are like the sand by the seashore, we cannot say it is many. However, Jesus said to us, Go and teach what I have commanded you, and lead them to obey. Why should we do so? It's because only then can people receive salvation. Let's confirm the same scene in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. What is the good news? It is all the laws and regulations that Jesus taught and commanded us to keep. In other words, it is the new covenant, isn't it? This is what we should preach. Then, why should all mankind hear the good news? When we hear the good news and obey it, God will be our God, and we will be His people and receive salvation. Let's see verse 15 again. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be what? Will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be what? Will be condemned. Because this will determine whether someone goes to heaven or hell. Jesus awakened us, saying, Teach everything I have commanded you, so that all nations can obey it. Sunday worship, Christmas, Thanksgiving, cross reverence, they were not taught to us by Jesus. Let us remind ourselves that these things cannot lead us to salvation. We should understand through the Bible that people who keep such things cannot walk with God. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow what? Follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will live in the land I gave your forefathers. You will be my people. And I will be what? I will be your God. I will do what? I will save you from all your uncleanness. We are now making every effort to save the world by preaching the gospel in Samaria and even to the end of the earth. In other words, we are delivering God's teachings to people. The truth, the way of keeping it, and the proper mindset of the new covenant must be preached to the whole world so that all people can follow the teachings of the new covenant. That kind of church is the church walking with God, and the people in that church are the people walking with God. However, many souls may not understand the message of salvation now. Some people may say, whenever she meets me, she only talks about the church. However, when she looks back at this situation from the spiritual world, she will think, truly, she had so much love. In order to save my soul, she made a lot of efforts for a long time. She made every effort to let me know what Jesus commanded us to keep. All people will know this in the end. All our family members will know. All our relatives, friends, and acquaintances will know that. God told us to preach the way to heaven to all people. When people hear this message, if they don't accept, it is up to them. We are not responsible for whether they accept or not. 
However, we should tell them the blessed and precious truth of life, shouldn't we? We should let people know so that they can come back into the arms of God. Heaven is not only for us, but for all people. Until all people gain true happiness, I would like to ask all the children of Zion to make a little more effort to fulfill this. Our Church of God is walking with God, and we are the people walking with God. Please have a blissful Sabbath day, pleasing to God. Through this Sabbath day, let us understand God's love and His will all the more. By this, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.